I was an interesting kid when I was little. My parents didn't know if I needed medicine or not. And they sent around child psychologists to hang out with me in the backyard for a few hours. I remember played Lego and trucks and just chatted like he was a cool dude. And he said to my parents, he's, a, he's definitely an interesting kid, but he doesn't need Ritalin. And so that made me a very easy target um, to people that were going through some hard times and wanted to see some pain. And so this pain came to me, came to me, came to me, came to me, came to me through fists and through ugly words throughout the rest of my schooling years. And which turned me obviously to drugs and alcohol because I just wanted to escape myself. So it came in here and bounced around here and conditioned me to believe that I was a piece of stinky brown stuff. You know, it changed from my life. If those tragic things hadn't have happened to me, I wouldn't have been able to see the light. You know, if I wasn't buried in the darkness, you know, I wouldn't have been able to crack out of my seed and flourish as seeds do. So I'm thankful for the darkness and the pain because it's made me who I am today. I do feel like a bit of an ancient man in modern times. The reason I say that is because over 10 years, four different people told me of ancient culture, the dance, which I knew nothing of. But the thing is, in one gram, in one drop of blood, you can hold 6,000 or 60,000 terabytes of data. So within your entire molecular construct, you ultimately have billions of years worth of data because your line, your DNA line, came from way back. And if you really want to go right back, once upon a time we came to the divine. Then we came out of the ground and one, two, three, four became many, many more. And this twinkling strand of pulsating light went through all living things. This miraculous mathematical equation just boomed through all, including you. But, um, you know, this, this world is so miraculous and beautiful and, and pinpoint precise. I truly believe that this was created by something, something that we cannot put words to. No matter how many centuries we've been trying, the ocean is the most mysterious thing down here. We had no idea what's going on with the ocean. So people like, you know, they step into that mystical realm to connect to some kind of higher force. And I truly do so through dance. Like I've legitimately felt waves of energy going through my body. Some yogis may feel this. And in a sense it is kind of like yoga, like when I dance. Like I'm, I, I may be doing this slow, but I lock it into my body, into my um, body mechanics. And I just speed it up and I speed it up. I speed it up and speed it up. And it's just like the sacred geometry of life and everything like that. Everything is a pattern, everything is a vibration, everything is a frequency. And I can actually feel like when I draw these patterns, these sacred geometry shapes that connect all as one, like I feel truly a part of that. And I don't, I literally don't care about what anyone else thinks of me. I put my ears on and I close my eyes and I do disconnect, but I connect to something higher and more powerful. I think that's what you saw. Yeah, um, so I was 19 at the time. And I came home from work and I just wanted my usual. So I called up my guy and he was down the road. And um, I used to go down my driveway every day. I had a big steep driveway and there's lots of flowers in my garden on the right hand side. So I'd have to listen for the cars coming up this massive hill. 
and my driveway was steep and it just went onto that hill. So I'd listen for those cars and because my driveway was so high, I could see all the cars that way. So I'd watch, make sure the coast was clear and I'd listen, make sure the coast was, coast was clear. But this one day I was um, a little bit, I don't know, too far gone, you could say. And I decided to run the gauntlet. And metaphorically speaking, I played Russian roulette with myself. I was listening to Slipknot at the time. There's a song called Sick. And it starts off with, here comes the pain. Pretty much prophesying over my life. Pain is coming. And I didn't really see a future for myself, so I already believed that. So I'm just like repeating the thought process and the patterns of this ugly music. So like I came down the driveway and I see this car waiting for me and it's going really fast. And I'm like, okay, well, here we go, bro. You can't ask for this. And the reason, one of the reasons why I did it with so much confidence is because I had, it was the only day of the year I put my helmet on. And I thought to myself, what's the worst that can happen? Legit, I've got a helmet on, what's the worst that can happen? You're not going to die. I said, I actually said those words to myself. And I went down the driveway. And then I remember for some strange reason, there was a kid by himself sitting in the middle. In Australia, when kids are by themselves, they're on one of the windows. They're never in the middle. I think it used to be against the law for one kid to sit in the middle when they were just by themselves. But this kid had a front row HD cinema screen ticket to my execution. And I bounced off that bonnet, boof. I remember seeing his mum and dad, dad was driving. And I went, woof, that way. My life, woof. Like photograph appears and then slowly fades away. And reality of the situation, that you're going higher. And another photograph would flash, fade away. You're higher now. Another photograph, higher. <laughs> photograph, higher. And then you're just sitting up there for a while. Photographs are just flashing and disappearing, flashing and disappearing. And then you're slowly starting to realise that you're coming down now. And you've never seen that dual angle of the street. Come closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the ground. And the last, after the last photograph flashes before you know you're about to hit the ground, you say goodbye to yourself. And then it just lights out. No more photographs. And then they get that smelly sore stuff that brings you back from the dead and you do that and your knee can do that. Legitimately. Uh, my whole back was a scab from sliding along the road. My helmet cracked. That could have been my skull. Collarbone and three ribs left um, my left lung was severely bruised. <clears throat> yeah. It was hectic. <laughs> and there's cops and ambulance and your dad like sitting down there on the road in your blood. <sighs> Extreme.
and there was this really cool guy, Richard Walsh, and he invited me to this youth group where there was lots of nice girls and there was cool dudes and they'd play games and stuff. And it was just like, it was different to my, my usual street corner hangs with the boys. And it was light and it was fun. And it was like, there was freedom and there was happiness, you know? And I would, that was very foreign to me if it wasn't in the form of some kind of exterior influence to alter my mind. Um, because I couldn't handle my life. And I legitimately started, I started singing these songs because these people were singing in the church. And I had this, I, the only way I can put it is spiritual experience. And, and I realized that and I recognized that and that it was like, there was something going on within me. Whether this was a higher force that I relate to as Christ Christ some would call it Christ consciousness. But like, you know, I was actually singing the Jerkisus. And something hit me. And um, and I'll never ever ever able to forget that. <laughs> and so I started, yes, like leaping like a deer. You know? Yeah, like swinging like a warrior. <sighs> and my happy tears, man. And had a rainbow right here, you know? I just like, I had to, you know, cause my trauma that I experienced through life, which turned me to the drugs, nothing was changing. The drugs was just numbing. That's it, it wasn't changing. It wasn't cleaning anything. It wasn't cleaning all the, the mess that I'd swept under the rug. It was just bringing in a nice breeze and airing out the room. Whereas the source of the stench was still under the rug. Um, and so there's certain trauma that's within the human body that can't be released through sound and it has to be a physical thing. It's when like say Bambi escapes a predator, she'll go and she'll, she'll find a place, a quiet hidden place and she'll shake her body and legitimately shake out the trauma. Like if, if you go through a really hectic experience in life, scary, whatever it may be, shocking, you'll probably take some deep breaths and shake your hands. Yeah, man. This is how we instinctually deal with trauma. And that's how I started to do it. That's how I started to feel better. I was just releasing and thanks that I was still here. And and then the connection that I felt with the divine and then the connection that I felt with, with everything else. Like, you know, like not just human beings, but with nature. I'm, just, I'm very thankful for that day. Mm. <sighs> <clears throat> I think by any chance, do you remember any of the songs he used to sing of the church? Um, wow. <sighs> Your love is sweeter than honey. Your love 
is stronger than death. Your love lifts me of my burdens, teaches me to dance. Your love sweeter than honey. Your love stronger than death. Your love lifts me of my burdens and teaches me to dance, to dance again. Teaches me to dance, to dance again. Oh, you love, you love, you love, you love, you love. Your love. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs>